Welcome back to Soccer 360 AFCON Special Edition. We have been covering the game that was played yesterday, third place playoff final between Nigeria and Tunisia. Now I want to get my pundits here, their quick thoughts on that game before we cross over to Davis Mberia to take us through our social media platforms. Now let me start with Dennis Otieno. Yeah. What, is, what are your <coughs> thoughts on that game, Nigeria taking third spot? Yeah, uh, first of all, remarkable performance from the Nigerian side. Uh, as opposed to what uh, both Mike and Bar Prince is saying that the game was boring, to me, it was one of the most interesting matches uh, of the tournament. Nigeria failed to get as many goals as they would have, courtesy of um, Igalo walking out with an injury. So I what think is it he would, with you, Igalo? He's a good like, player. We have, to, we have to give credit where it's due. Looks like you want <laughs> him in Manchester. Not at all. <laughs> you want him in Manchester. They already, have, they already have Lukaku. Listen, so the Igalo is really Lukaku is going. Lukaku. People, <laughs> we were seeing sublime passes. Like, Nigeria actually outplayed Tunisia, especially in the first half. Nigeria played Tunisia, and I think um, it, it was an interesting game. And um, Tunisia, I think they're going back to the drawing board, and I don't think that keeper is ever going to play another match for the Tunisian side. Wait, you, you'll get your turn to talk. Okay. Thank you. Those are Dennis, Dennis, Dennis' thoughts on uh, yesterday's game, Nigeria, Tunisia. Now, let me get Michael and Deku's thoughts. Yeah, on I that mean, game. my goodness. Ben, yes, sir, yes, sir, Ben. What the hell did he do again? He <laughs> like came he, Mike is to the opponent's team. <laughs> and, I was, and I said, the only key for Nigeria is if the goalkeeper doesn't, and he did a mistake. Oh, ah, yeah. my goodness. An egregious, abominable game. Let me go. We were even um, trying to defend the keeper in, you know, in the first round. I'll still goal. be like, like, okay, fair enough. Yes, it's partly his fault. But he's, he punched the ball and he just keeps no. ricocheting off the defender again. Devin, no. you're supposed, if you're punching, this is the way you're punching away. He punched it straight into his, 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 his teammate. Then, of course, Igalo pounced on that. Igalo got a lucky goal. First of all, that's, ah. not, even, that's not even a ball to parry in yeah. the first place. Okay, so you look at have, the position, you know, the hands angle. On it. Yeah. Maybe the, ball, the cross was too powerful, that's why he decided to punch. I don't know. No, the, his decision making was bad because that's a ball you just... Yeah. I mean, your knee and he, caused, grab it. he caused Tunisia a place in the final to potentially face Algeria where they would definitely lose. Yeah. And now he's cost them a medal for that. My goodness, that was a bad game. I thought Tunisia didn't play well. The only person who seemed like he was trying was Wabi Kazri. The rest of them are looking like they were waiting for a shawarma Kazri. or mm -hmm. a kebab. I don't know what they eat in Tunisia. <laughs> but, but I think... You want a shawarma? It's just a yeah. point. You want a shawarma? <laughs> shawarma. You want, you want one? Is that English? <laughs> anyway, your thoughts on the game, Bob? <laughs> is that English, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> What or a what? A kebab. Or a kebab. Yeah, kebab. he's used to kebab. I always say, talk the language that <laughs> mutu wa kawangware atasikia. Shawa, okay. Mutu wa mukarara atasikia. Shawarma, we don't, know what, we don't know how to call it in... What's it called in Swahili? Does it even... Okay, is that English? It's yes. like, a, is it the word where they put the kanyamanyama? In between that kebab. It is yeah, English. It's a delicacy. Yeah, that's English. Yeah. yeah. It's tasty. I should get for you one. No, I don't. I know you'll enjoy it. I cannot eat a shawarma. Him is for Waidaka, babes. You'll ruin his career. Mutu wa mukarara. Ongea kitu mutu wa mukarara. Ukisikia mina ongea kitu. Unajua sometimes, you really need to get what... You know, it's if it was a shawawa. Whatever you are talking, you people, you mutapoteza mutu. You know, but let me come back now to our point. Director, I'm going to say Zoya Mutura. Mutu, ya, yeah, sasa siwezi kata. Ah, Mutu wa geto wa wa geto guda. <laughs> hey, unata, unataka ni kata ya niseme mimi ni wanini? Though mimi ni wa sometimes ni likuwa naishi pia upper Lovington. Ah, I mean yeah, lower Covington. Lower Covington, yeah. Lower Covington, yeah. Lovington, no, lower Lovington. Lovington. Lower Lovington. Lower Lovington. Lower Lovington. Lower Lovington. Lower Lovington. Lower Lovington. Don't mention. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, your thoughts about Prince on the game, Nigeria, Tunisia. My, my, my thoughts ni, first of all, nani, um, uzo. Africa needs to be serious. I mean, in terms of selecting Kina Josh and Yango we really need to be serious when it comes to that. And again, on the other side, I think uh, on that goal, Nikki Obado uh, the goalkeeper, yes, he did some mistake. Uh, he did a mistake. Because I think Meria was just there to protect that ball. All right? Because when crossing Meleto, sometimes as number five or as somebody who plays on the center back, mm -hmm. you have to come in, make sure that there's nobody behind you, and protect, it, uh, protect that ball for the goalkeeper to have it. Now, Meria came to protect the ball, but on the same, uh, on the same time, Akapata goalkeeper shy punch. So Haku and any other option, mm -hmm. and it hit him, and the Galo was there to score. And uh, on the other side, Kina Hadadi, uh, Kina Dreja, Dreja is one person who has uh, shown his, uh, you know, um, I mean, his giantness in that, in that, in that match, and, and, and he did well. On that fullback, number two, I mean, Alifanya Paul, on the side of Tunisia. Mm. Her daddy, he was failing to come to Saidiya, the, the, the centre-back, because the, there was need who also got an injury uh, later on, and then uh, Maria. 
as, as the back for you to assist each other. That is what I say, Dennis, that uh, Collins came with a cross. Mm. I mean, he, he, he ran with the ball, and then uh, uh, Musa went behind him to cover him. This high could not happen on the side of Tunisia. So na pata mtu wa meingia kukuja kusaidia, hata kwa kichwa, nobody to clear the ball. Yeah. Sometimes hata uki clear, there's nobody pale mbele wa kimiza na ball. So I mm. think Tunisia ili, ili jilet down. I think they had nothing to lose. Only well, Samatua to Mifka number four. It is okay. We are contented. A, and yeah. That's all. In yeah. short, it was a dead rubber. It game. was. Mm. It was a boring match. Okay, now um, uh, time to. We have to cross over to our social media corner. But before I get uh, to Davis Maria, let me just repeat the trivia question for today, which is who scored the tenth goal in this year's Afcon. I'll repeat that one more time. Who scored the tenth goal in this year's Afcon? Um, did I give any hints? No, no I didn't. didn't give any hint. But it's not a player from East Africa. That's the only hint I'll give you, sort of player from East Africa. So now uh, let's just join up with Davis Beria, who is on our social media corner. He'll be taking us through all the viewers' feedbacks, their answers to today's question. And then again, this Gemma Jones had posted a poll yesterday regarding who should be protecting the wall, arranging the wall, sorry, or between the goalkeeper or the coach. So Davis Beria, let you take, take us through our social media platforms. Shukran sana mwenzangu Delvin upande wa pili na kina uh, ba mbaya amezungumziana kuhusiana na Mutura bwana. Sijui mambo ya Mutura <laughs> yanaingilianaje na mambo ya Afcon <laughs> na finali ameongelea pia kuhusiana na umri wa Uzoho. <laughs> Sina mengi ya kukuambia kuhusiana na haya. Wacha kwanza nipitie jumbe swali la siku ni vipi mashabiki wanasema kwenye mtandao wa Twitter kwenye arafa zetu. Na nikisoma swali liko linasema kwamba who scored uh, the 10th goal in this year's Africa Cup of Nations nani alifunga bao la kumi katika dimba la mwaka 2019 la bara Afrika kule Misri na baadhi ya mashabiki wameza kutema maoni yao kwenye mtandao wa Twitter nitayapitia kwanza kisha nizamie yale ya, ya kwenye Arafa nikianza hapa Twitter kuna ya Gemma Jones anasema Oh, I think you should discuss how this AFCON tournament has been so far and also ne uh, necessary changes that will be needed for the next AFCON to be better than this one. Also talk about the impact of VAR has played in the AFCON uh, in this tournament. We are going to talk about how many people are VP Dimba Hili la AFCON limekuwa na inafaa turekebishe wapi uh, katika awamu zingine zijazo katika miaka ya hapo mbeleni na kisha VAR imesaidia vipi katika dimba hili la Afcon kumka kwamba VAR iliweza kuanzishwa katika awamu ya robo finale tukiona pale juu Gemma Jones pia amesema kwamba the 10th goal was scored by none other than Keira Balde on the on the 28th minute when they beat Tanzania by two goals to nil in the Senegal uh, opening match at the Afcon 2019 we are going to say uh, dhidi ya Senegal alikuwa mchezaji wa Senegal akafunga dhidi ya Tanzania uh, katika mm. mechi ambayo Senegal walibuka uh, washindi au mabingwa mechi hiyo kwa mabao mawili kwa nunge kuna yeye mwingine hapa juu anaitwa Collins Ocheng anasema uh, the tenth, uh, tenth goal of Afcon 2019 was scored by Kera Balde of Senegal in their match against Tanzania huyu pia amesema hapo ilikuwa dhidi ya Tanzania Tanzania created a chance for the 10th uh, goal of 2019 scored by Kera Balde of Senegal. Uyu ni Elizabeth uh, Lizzy kwenye mtandao bado wa Twitter. Pale juu mwingine ni Masi Karanja anasema this question has really uh, got me consulting doc, uh, Dr. Google which tells me that the 2019 AFCON 10th goal was scored by Senegal player Balde Kera. Kera. Masi Karanja anasema kwamba amelazimika mai memlazimu kwenda pale Kum, kumuliza Dr. Google bana amwambie ni mchezaji upi alifunga bao hili la kumi. pale juu kidogo kabla niende kwenye rafa zetu kuna Emilia Tabitha huyu ni mwenzangu kitengo cha Kiswahili mwanabari ama uh, msomaji wa habari za saa moja jioni pia anatazama kipindi amesema kwamba can't wait uh, for the final tomorrow uh, na msome tweet yangu <laughs> msome tweet yangu uh, tafadhali tweet yako tumeshasoma na bila shaka zidi kuganda ndani Emilia Tabitha hapo juu amesema Senegal player Baldev Keira uh, scored uh, the goal Tunashukuru ametaja 
uh, mchezaji kumbe pia unajua soka kisha uh, sitasoma tuti zote manake muda utakwisha na hapa nimeona arafa nyingi zinazidi kumiminika kwenye uh, arafa zetu kunazo nambari pale chini ya arafa na mtandao whatsapp nikianza na arafa kuna aye mmoja hapa anasema vitex boy watching from eldoret algeria gonna be the kings of football in africa comes what goes what algeria boom correct score algeria to win 2 nil huyu ni vitex boy kutoka eldoret anasema kwamba algeria wanaenda kuibuka mabingwa katika dimba la afcon mwaka 2019 kunyeshe kusinyeshe wataibuka mabingwa kwa mabao mawili kwa bila kuna mwingine hapa anasema hello ebru show uh, tunaipata poa sana tunashukuru apathika keita balde of senegal scored the 10th goal of afcon against tanzania huyu ni ajesema jina amesema tu uh, wanatupata vizuri kutoka uh, eneo la thika tunashukuru sana zidi kukaa ndani ya show zidi kutuma jumbe yako kutuma jumbe bila shaka mtazamaji tuma na jina lako nami nitalisoma hewani kuna mwingine pale kwenye rafa bado anasema am Eugene from umoja 3560 uh, the 10 goal of afcon was scored by maharez though it was somehow de uh, deflected goal algeria 2 uh, versus kenya nil yeye anasema kwamba maharez ndiye alifunga bao la kumi katika dimba la afcon ambapo walituzaba ambao walizaba harambe stars mabao mawili kwa bila soka 360 uh, show iko sawa kabisa lakini kesho i hope nicolette will be on show i love the way she analyze yeye anasema kwamba anatumai kwamba nicolette atakuwa kwenye kipindi bana na penda sana jinsi anavyochambua mechi zake jinsi anavyo tema uchambuzi wake kwenye kipindi kizima cha soka 360 kuna mwingine hapa anasema Nigeria though it, it is also a good team anasema kwamba Nigeria walishinda lakini bila shaka ni timu nzuri kabla kurejea kwa kina Delvin naona mwingine hapa anasema anapenda uh, show vizuri um, uh, I'm Kevin from Kuresoi. Kevin, nashukuru sana bila shaka Kuresoi wanatupata vema na zidi kuganda ndani. Kabla ni pita kwenu Delvin kuna mwingine hapa anasema I'm Skola, I'm watching the show from Webuye. Skola, tunashukuru sana zidi kukanda ndani ya pale Webuye ukitizama Ebru TV na kipindi kizima cha Soka 360. Mtazamaji zidi kusema nasi katika mitandao ya Twitter, katika mtandao wa Facebook, katika arafa zetu kunaye nambari pale juu ya arafa na nambari pale uh, chini ya mtandao wa WhatsApp. Kisha kwenye Twitter zidi kutema maoni yako @davismberia at 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 delvin at, at delvin owino at dennis otieno na hashtag #baprince. Kuna yule mwingine Atatuambia hashtag. Tuambie hashtag bana ili tukutag tu kidogo. Hashtag Papa Mike. Hashtag Papa Mike. Naam, hizo hashtag zote tutag <laughs> zote alafu tume jumbe zako kwenye Twitter <laughs> nasi tutazisoma. Hashtag ni soka360. Ukitema jumbe nasi tutasoma bila shaka ndio jukumu letu la kuwa hapa. Kwenye Delvin kama mna swali kuhusiana na mechi za jana nambari tatu akibuka a uh, mwana Nigeria. Swali lipo? Thank you very much Mr. Davis Odongo Mberia. Now, any Yo menita jina nzima. Eh, this man. Any of you here have a question for Mr. Mberia? Lakini uliza hao watu. Hao watu wametumia Google gani? Because kuna mmoja amesema ni ni Mahrez, mwingine amesema ni Balde. Sasa hizi Google zao zina madanganya ama ni guess wako wanafanya? Sijui watazamaji mnauliza kwamba mmetumia Google ama mnageza. Lakini kabla niondoke wacha nisome tu hapa tweet moja Delvin alikuwa ametupa nimeona hapo amempiga kidogo buti kidogo. Alikuwa ameuza kwenye Twitter kwamba tell us what you want us to discuss today on Soka 360. Afu pale chini kuna watu wamepiga ma reply ban. Wamesema discuss about the Africa Cup are firing the coaches day day out day in. Alafu pale chini pia uh, Gemma Jones amesema also want you guys to discuss about Algeria hiyo kando. Sasa kuna Chris Muratha amesema kwamba <laughs> Mustafi as a new Arsenal captain. <laughs> Mama ya. <laughs> What? Mama ya. <laughs> Mustafi the new Arsenal. Yeah, we pay you all. Chris Chris Muratha. Chris Muratha with some <laughs> banter. Our season is over already. Siongezei si bagui bana. Kwenye Delvin, Delvin zidi kutafakari oh kujana na Chris Murata. Chris Murata. You know Chris Murata. But uh, Mberia before before you leave us, of course kulikuwa na poll. I think one um, viewer, I think Gemma Jones had put up a, a, tree, a pretty much a poll yeah. regarding Baprince um, contentious issues regarding uh, goalkeepers. Mm. And 
coaches, who yeah. amongst these two um, arranges the wall when it comes to a free kick situation? Like, yeah, no. So can you, um, if, if you might by any chance find the tweet and let's see the polls by Gemma Jones. I think if, let, if let Barry even tell us his opinion. Who do you think arranges the wall during a Barry direct our, free our kick? Our Goalkeeper or coach? I think hapo ni goalkeeper. Unajua keeper ndio manake ukiangalia sana wakati uh, mpira wa kabu na pigwe. Kabu yote kipigwe ni mlinzi ambaye ataweza kuambia wachezaji wake wakae vipi manake ndio wajua uh, ni wapi kunaweza kuwa na shimo na ni wapi kunaweza kingwa kidogo kwangu naona ni kipa bana kocha yuko kule kwenye line bana atapanga exactly. vipi uwanjani za <laughs> sa beria any other question for beria but, uh, what no, because he's going against you. What a belly I had a music at a bab, that's how you say, but the goalkeeper. No, I do have his son. No, I do have his son. A goalkeeper and a coach, Lazimo Elias. When I do, I do, but Prince, who say it is? Malimu. Mwalimu anaweza kupatia anaweza kufunza jinsi ya kufanya hesabu mm. lakini aezi kufuata hadi akikupatia jukumu la kufanya hesabu zile tulikuwa tunasema homework aezi kufuata hadi nyumbani kusaidia kufanya homework lakini kama sasa homework ni kama uko ndani ya uwanja kocha aezi kuambia kwamba kila saa atakwambia panga hivi panga hivi hapana we ni kipa bana unajua lakini kwa wachezaji wako Dennis Unajua pia Dennis sorry <laughs> no. um, it, it's also a, it's all it's partly the goalkeeper and the coach in terms of the coach is the one who does mm. the preparation beforehand no. and is the one who can yeah, do the analytics and whatever find the best way to arrange the wall and leave it uh, there I love that when you're in the game situation now the goalkeeper takes over but and that yes, is what it, I was saying it's partial it's partial how many we can let me say man coach and arrange yes, you how many we can let you know what how what we win how dare they see you how dare how dare so, they? Because you've seen you've lost the poll on Twitter. No, no, it's don't it's, don't, don't, don't change you. your thing. Sixty percent of the people are talking about the goalkeeper. Yeah, forty percent of the people are talking about coach. Let me let now, me. Now this forty okay, percent okay, okay. who are voting. Okay, calm down. Uh, let me. I want, to, I want to just deny what you've said completely. You sure. cannot deny there what Mike has no said. There is no way That's a coach who is not on the field can orchestrate with the goalkeeper of how to arrange the wall. Yeah. No way. He has, no, not, he has even, no view It's not even a training strategy, but Prince. <coughs> but that at one point, at one point, at one point at we are training, and then the coach comes and says, when it comes to a free kick situation, Do I'm this, going to need seven players uh, in the uh, wall. Uh, uh, Mathematically, it's not view. possible. Can you give me, me one? Let me, but let, let, let's solve this here now. Yes. Let me ask you guys. Um, before, before a, a, a good coach, before we play a certain team, let's say you're preparing for Barcelona. Yeah. You know you're going to face a, a free kick specialist like Lionel Messi. A good coach does what? Strategizes. Sindio, you first of all go, study how Messi takes free kicks. That is if you know what you're doing as a coach. Then, once you know how he takes free kicks, you know, for example, you've seen samples of his free kicks, you as the coach, you can now pass on instruction to the players when it comes to this particular situation, just like corners. Corners, a coach will arrange players, even when you play FIFA. So you can arrange players, or not that can you can arrange the players up with So you're already coaching. Now when it's, when it's played now, when it's in live action now, the goalkeeper now takes command. Mm. If there's any change that needs Anona, to happen, yeah, maybe, maybe Messi now? won't take it, maybe it's Vidal who's mm. going to line up from the right way. Now it changes everything, doesn't line up to the left. But in terms of preparation, the coach is responsible. Lazima we up on my game situation. In decision making. Let's see, let's see Beria. Beria has something to add on. Zoezi kocha atakwambia eh, iwapo kutapatikana na ikabu ufanye hivi ufanye hivi ufanye hivi kama kipa ni baadhi ya mafunzo ambayo uh, kocha wa makipa upatia makipa wao sasa ikifika wakati wa mechi ifurahi pia kocha amezifanya kufundisha kila pande ya wachezaji panga hivi hapana okay okay but Beria, do you agree that. do but you agree that the coach and the goalkeeper uh, wana liars kufanya ikazi and to, and to just and to uh, um, add on to what you've said there i don't think it's the for watching set pieces, yes, uh, the whole team will watch Messi that takes his free kicks like this yeah, and like that. The, and I think the goalkeeper is going to be mainly focused on how Messi takes the free kicks. Mm. For the coach, I think his tactics would be, let's not foul them in around the box, in and around the D, because mm. you know Messi can do this and that. But I think when it comes to gameplay, it's down to the goalkeeper, because he's the one who has that view. He's the one who knows how many people should be on that wall to block this side of the, of the goal. Mm. The coach, has n he can't... He can't, he just has no yeah. word or no I, say yeah. in that situation. I give up. Just give up. Let's go. Let's continue. Just give up. Now, let's move just on. Just give guys. up. Let's move on. Um, uh, a, few people, a few people have told us that um, they want us to discuss uh, the VAR situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, which other topics are there? VAR, um, um, the, uh, the tournament coaches, as a whole. Coaches, coaches getting being mm, fired. fired. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? Let's start with the VAR. 
Can Once I talk uh, about VR? Start, start with VR. Okay. My, quick, your quick thoughts on VR. Okay, only one sentence. <laughs> My quick thought on VR is that VAR, VAR in football is just a scam. A scam. I don't like it. Do you I don't do you, like do you, do you agree it. Should be eliminated. I think completely. VAR is a positive thing in that we get the <clears throat> accurate information of what happened. But, you know, it removes the flow and flexibility of the game. I mean, it should only be used in highly and extremely highly contentious situations. But other than that, I think it should, the game should run the way the game should always run. Yeah, I just feel like it's interfering with the game. It's interfering with Watching the game. Watching the women's World Cup. Then what? What are referring? Yeah, the women's World Cup is a, the women's World Cup is a good example. The yes. VR was yeah. just being overused. Everywhere. Yeah. Your thoughts? So VR is absolutely accurate, yes, um, but the number of times it's being used is what is making yeah, the game yeah. boring, just sitting there waiting for a decision, uh, moments of tension. I think like other sports, like, you know, we said, we said it before, tennis, cricket, World Cup and all these other sports, um, they should limit the number of times yeah. VR is getting used. But like I said earlier, VR is making its debut in football and it's, it's, it's more like um, getting... People are getting more accustomed to VAR. So we are yet to get there. Corrections are being made as time goes by. So we are yet to get there and get to that perfection of but VAR. VAR let me just ask you, how, how, how hard is it for those FIFA, those FIFA officials to just see that the v, this whole VR situation, first, it's being overused. Mm -hmm. Second, it just slows down the momentum of the game. Yeah. Why can't they just implement something before even the Premier League kicks off? Because the VR will be in place in this new Premier League season. I think, why can't they just, one minute, mm -hmm. why can't they just say, okay, from when the Premier League begins, mm -hmm. each team per game will have one VR review. Well, I think um, the, the officials, the officials who actually came up with VR, are still um, remaining adamant that their system is actually the right way to go. And then again, another thing, yeah, there, there have been uh, the VR all thing was being sponsored by Uber. Yeah, did you, did you see and that? I, I think you've raised a very good point. Like for example, <laughs> the NFL, yeah, National Football League, the, the American football thing for America. Yeah. What they have each team has three challenges on the referee. So if a referee says this is, for example, a, someone had a high tackle, now the, the opposing team can challenge. You can only challenge three, three times. times. Three times and you have three timeouts. So I think maybe each team should have maybe like two VR ninis and if yeah. you waste it, that's on that's you. It. That's on you. This, this is a very important point Delvin has brought about um, Uber sponsoring VAR calls. Mm. I think that is going to turn, uh, take a commercial turn. I know, yeah. Because each yeah, and every time yeah, you get yeah. fouled, uh, you know there's a sponsorship coming through, so you take a break, go for VR, yes, cut a seat. I'm telling you, yeah. Yeah. that's what's going to be happening. <laughs> yes, you see, no, that's <laughs> the Uber Eats. No, Guys, it's, it's Uber Eats let VR. me say this. I think we should come up, or the international body, uh, that is the, the FIFA, should come up with the regulations on how to use this VR. Mm. That this is the time we should. And me, on my view, I think VR came because some people uh, or, or some clubs will call a bishana like ball na ingia. How many? Like for example, if I use this uh, this ball, uh, if ball iko kwenye line, if 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 uh, we can show it, the half of the ball, if imevuka line ile katikati kwa kwalango, is it a goal or not? Yeah, yeah. Kukona that the half of the ball, if imevuka maybe three quarter iko in the net, it's a goal. It's a goal. All right. Yeah. That is why VR was brought. But no, but the referees have. I think that no, no, is no, no, where no, no, we no. should use. That's it. not even for VR. The referees have these watches for the ball crossing the line. It has nothing to do with VR. Yeah, but, 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 but it's all about sounds. cameras and, and, and yes, whatever. Sensors. On the, on the, yeah, on the sensors. The sensors. Yes. It, in the Anza Evo, then that, the yeah. VR came. But I don't think, Delvin, that the VR should be used to see or to determine a, a penalty or whatever. Because, mm. let me tell you, I think one of the conscience of that referee, if a takosea, then badai kuletwe ile sasa maralamishi and then it was looked at to kiona referee alikosea adhibiwe kivyake that that will bring now the consistency of referee okay. kufanya Guys, kazi yake i don't like vr at all because we're running out of time uh, we we'll have like a minute left i just want your quick thoughts on this whole issue of uh, nations getting rid of their coaches right after this afcon i think <clears throat> i think nations fall under the pressure of their citizen just like Harambe stars, yes, we, uh, Kenyans have been very patriotic to the Harambe stars side. But um, when you look at a team like Harambe stars being given that 244 million and going there not performing, um, <clears throat> you start lashing at the coach. Like uh, at some point, I was saying, it's the players who are to blame, not the coach. So um, 
the nation actually falls and to the pressure of the fans or pretty much the citizens of the country and they end up sacking the coach. Okay, quickly, Michael. Me, I'd say Quick for thoughts. me, the whole coaching thing reflects the political stability of Africa. In terms of, if you look at Afri African countries, our governments, the way they are set up, they're eruptive, they're volatile, they're unstable, and that reflects on the football fraternity because it's, Football is a, is a small organization that reflects the political stability of the country. You look at Western countries, they are stable uh, politically and thereby their football organizations, their football structures and infrastructures are well set up and they are very stable and calm. So I think until we solve our own political stability, we will con we'll continue seeing these co coaches being fired, uh, organizations not, not standing uh, the way they're supposed to stand and being solid and concrete. Okay, quickly, quickly, quickly. quickly. We, we should uh, compare ourselves with... Uh, more advanced teams like Kina uh, Tunisia. Uh, how many or how long Kina Balde or Mekana teams are? All right, and 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 I really think it, it, it is never the solution to sack a coach because Pia Lazima Mongale the infrastructure. Sometimes the coach and a a good way of coaching, but on the on the pitch when it comes to execution on the pitch, utu ana ana fail. Sasa unataka kuniambia kama jana Tunisia utanza kublem coach kwa sababu ya. Mm. What happened yesterday? Mm. Okay, mm. should not be. So that's a very Give good topic, time. and I think uh, we will need like a whole, a whole show actually to discuss this topic, and probably we should discuss this on Saturday or even yeah. tomorrow mm. if we do have time. Now, unfortunately, we have run out of time. You've heard it from my pundits regarding the third place playoff final between Nigeria and Tunisia that was played yesterday. Nigeria taking the bronze medal home. Now, I want to thank them for coming, Mike Indeku, late comer, but anyway, you made it. Thank you for being here. But it's, it's when you put on uh, such capes and such hats, uh, yeah, I, I see them now as this, and I'm old people who put on such hats. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Getting, okay. Guys, getting, guys, I think I'm a professor. Guys, 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 guys. We're, not, we're not in a classroom, what a prefect, so we have to close the show. <laughs> Dennis Ocheno, thank you very much. Anytime. And Francis Uzo. Noise maker. <laughs> Bar Prince, thank you very much as Mutua usual. Mukarara, Bar Mutua Prince, Mutua Waida, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> thank you for coming. I want to thank the viewers at home for sending in their fee feedback on our social media platforms. And remember, you can continue discussing all these topics with us, hashtag Soccer360. Now, um, do catch Dennis Otieno tomorrow from 1.30 to 2.30, same time, as he will be previewing, alongside me as well, the pre previewing the final, which is going to be between Senegal and Algeria. And then, of course, tomorrow as well at 9.30, we do have something special lined up. Now, I've been your host, Delvin Owino. Do enjoy the rest of our, your afternoon, and do keep it sporty.